What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. I was in the process of making this video. It was going to be our France versus Fiji preview. Was really looking forward to getting into it. Uh, Fiji got announced and then out of the blue this game has now been cancelled. Uh, so I thought what I'd do is I'd still check on the game in the background. I'll still play a bit of rugby and we'll have a bit of a chat about this game being cancelled, what the impact's going to be on the tournament and where I see it all changing and different things happening. So Let's jump into the game and let's get into why this game has been cancelled. Okay guys, so we're going to play as Fiji in this game, so we're going to kick off with Jay Stone. He's a non-licensed player, because <laughs> Rugby 20 didn't get all the licenses. So, let's talk about this game being cancelled. So the reason this game got cancelled uh, is mainly down to COVID reasons. I did see that Fiji had announced their team yesterday, um, but I did notice some big names were off the sheet, one of which being Semi Randrada which feels like a big missed opportunity with such a key player in their ranks so they haven't been able to choose from. So I thought it was a little bit strange anyway. I've been waiting for the France team to also be announced. Uh, I was sort of prepping what I was going to say about the Fiji team. France actually announced the 31-man squad that was going to be going through over to Murrayfield in two weeks' time. They've announced that team before this team. Um, and that team is completely different. Some of you guys have been absolutely great at dropping down in the comments some stuff I didn't know. I didn't know there was going to be a change in um, the way the French leagues were doing games now. So the French leagues, for those of you who don't know, and I've only been <laughs> informed from people telling me in comments and looking it up a bit, basically there's been a deal made that the standard French first team were only going to be allowed to play a set number of games before they finished their Six Nations tour which meant that they were going to have all of their key French players, Dupont, Entomac, Olivant, Aldrit, all these players were only going to be able to play one more game, which they were basically going to line up to play Fiji by all accounts of what I can read and what I can find about the subject. They were basically going to put on a full France team versus Fiji, and then it was going to be basically a team made up of Division 2 and B team players that they were going to then try and go on to beat Italy and Scotland with. Uh, I don't know what happened to that Fiji guy's leg then. Did you see that? <laughs> like, uh, but we got that completely version that was pretty good um so they were going to basically make up a secondary team and it was going to be interesting to see if france would even make that final that changes the complete outlook on a video i did on who i thought would win this tournament because it was all going to shift up there so this team that was going to be announced for this game i thought was going to be a big big french team um and because of what seems to just be a covid restriction that's come in apparently semi randrada tested positive as well as one of the centers that could all change, that could be updated a little bit, that's all I've seen up till now when I'm actually filming this. Um, so there's been a big sort of COVID hit in the Fijian ranks which sort of messed up their game. They had a bit of a warm-up game they were meant to have um, a couple of weeks back and they didn't have that game. Now they're not going to have this one versus France. It's a bit questionable whether they're even going to compete now in this tournament. Would they be able to get back in time to play their Italy game? It's a bit unsure at the minute. But what it does mean for France is that all of those players that were meant to play Fiji are now going to have the ability to play their final game of the year against Scotland which means it suddenly goes from Scotland A team versus a France B team to now we're going to see Scotland A versus France A which is going to make that game way more exciting from what I was sort of thinking yesterday I was a little bit downtrodden I thought oh that means that Scotland will probably beat a France B team um, but now that you've got an 18 versus an 18, this is a complete redo of the Six Nations game they had earlier in the year. So I'm really looking forward to that game now. That will now come down to like one of the biggest decision makers, I think, in this tournament as to who will get into that final. Um, as for the group stages, I'm not sure. Oh, we just about squeezed <laughs> that try in there. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen in terms of their group as a whole, because there will only be three teams if Fiji can't complete the rest of their games. So at that point, I wonder whether they would end up just doing Scotland versus France and Italy and then Scotland and Italy playing each other. I wonder if they would just have three teams, which means one team would actually go into the final having played less games than everyone that's in Conference A. And I wonder what would that change up if you had a Scotland or a French side that haven't actually played as many games. Would that go in with less experience in the international game? Or would it mean they have less tired players to actually go through to that final game? Meaning they go in with a bit of advantage. Um, I still believe England are going to win. We have the first game going on tonight. That's going to be Ireland versus Wales, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, there's been some disagreements <laughs> between some of my friends about who we think might win that one. I think Ireland should be looking to take that one, even with the uh, the slightly newer team, the slightly lesser cap team they're putting on versus Wales. Wales going in with a heavy team it's very likely that Wales could actually come away with that but they're going to need some impressive turnaround in order for them to do that 
But what a blow for Fiji this is going to be. The ability to get into a tournament like this after all their sort of disappointments they've had, especially in recent years with games. They didn't have the particularly best World Cup, and I think they've played very well in their sort of local region international games that they do. They're coming in now being able to play some top tier teams and I think they will have been really looking forward to going up against teams like Italy, teams like Scotland and, you know, even France to an extent. Even if it was the the B team France, they probably would have looked to try and win that game. Um, but I don't think they're going to be able to do maybe the rest of this tournament. I don't know what the ruling will be on it. I guess they'll all have to self-isolate in terms of the actual team. Uh, I don't know where they've all based. I'm guessing they're all put up in a hotel or somewhere, but if they've all been working out together and stuff, they may have to all be quarantined together. Oh, can we squeeze a try here? <laughs> I don't know how I haven't managed to score that try. That's ridiculous. Um, that would have been great right on the half. But uh, I imagine they all have to be quarantined. I mean, if they're going to do a quarantine, that's going to be two weeks. So that means they're definitely probably going to end up missing that Italy game. Um, and I don't think with the way the tournaments are going to work out, they're going to be extend. The final game of this tournament was meant to be played on the 5th of December. And as soon as you start trying to postpone games and playing those postponed games later in December, you get near the Christmas area. Then as soon as you're heading towards, you know, January, you're looking how close is this going to be to Six Nations games? Would France want to replay Fiji so close to the next Six Nations? Would England or Ireland want to play them in the final? I mean, it brings up a lot of different arguments as to what could happen. Uh, so th I think this one could be that they might actually just end up ruling Fiji out and they'll have to do a, a best of three teams in that Conference B section for them. But this decision as a whole, I think, could actually illuminate some different aspects of this tournament, especially with the idea now that France are going to be able to put their main side on against Scotland. Uh, let me know what you guys think, how this is going to develop and change the layout of the tournament. Some of you guys have been really, really helpful. Let me know, linking articles and stuff to me about what's happening with some of the French rugby and some of the French clubs. Um, some people have been telling me in the comments that they think the, the big game of this tournament is actually going to be between France and Scotland to decide who wins that one. And I think if it was going to go down to a Division 2 France versus the main Scotland side, I don't know if I'd actually see France winning that. I did see the the listed squad they put up, the, who they thought they were going to take to Murrayfield. Um, but they're, the player list is looking strong, to be fair. And there's a couple of players that you tend to see on the bench who are actually Class A players who just don't get in the start. In 15, people like um, Baptiste Serin is, uh, was on the sheets as, as their sort of starting number nine, I imagine he would go in at that point. You know, play, people who do play in that France team but are just kept out of the starting 15 due to their being slightly better players. So they weren't exactly going to be a weak team going in, um, but would they be able to take on a starting Scotland team that, you know, is looking more and more consistently at getting good wins against high-tier nations? I, I don't know if I would have seen a B team France doing that, but with the ability now to chuck on their first team again, will they be looking for a bit of revenge <laughs> after that terrible Six Nations turn up they had where Scotland just basically outplayed them entirely in uh, in their game? But again, they're, but going back to Murrayfield, uh, I believe the France-Scotland game they had in the Six Nations was also in Murrayfield. Uh, let's try and... Uh, <laughs> well, that quick throw-in didn't work in the background there. Um, but I'd love to know what you guys think about this. Do you think... If France get to put on a first team versus Scotland, that France should be able to win that game? Or do you think Scotland will be able to pull that back out of the bag and be able to take on that superb French team that is just doing very well? I don't think they will have been happy with their Six Nations. I think they'll be looking to make amends in this tournament. And I also think they'll probably want to look now, if they can win that Scotland game with a starting French team, that means they'd be able to put on a B team against Italy who realistically, I would say, even a B-team France should be really believing they could beat that Italy team. Um, they're not particularly defensive, the Italian team. They are getting a lot stronger, but they're definitely... Wait, what? What was, <laughs> what was that penalty? It's an incorrect restart. What a weird decision that was. Um, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. We'll take a scrum. Uh, I've lost my train of thought now. But Italy are definitely improving. But I think the the B team that I read of the of the French team, I, I think there is enough good players in there that they could look to steal that game. And if they then managed to win the Scotland and Italy game and made it into that final, let's say they were up against either England or Ireland, I wonder whether they would actually want to look at that as should they try and change this league ruling of not releasing 
some of the international players from club level. I wonder if they would actually change the rule back to allow France to have the best possible chance at winning the tournament in order for them to go into the Six Nations with a higher sort of belief that they'll be able to win the next Six Nations. Um, I can already see them being very, very competitive for the Six Nations next year. Obviously, they've got their World Cup coming up in just a couple of years' time. Oh, there was a big tackle there on <laughs> Gail Ficou in the middle. Uh, I think that'll be a yellow card. Oh, it was a tackle from Gail Ficou. <laughs> so the question for me is whether then France would actually want to try and win this cup. Obviously, we don't know whether this tournament is going to be a one-off tournament where they could actually look at trying to turn this into a, a yearly annual thing. Um, obviously, you know, it's going to be a bit awkward with all the uh, all the COVID situations going on. Oh, can we squeeze through here with a patu? <laughs> it's going pretty well. We're doing pretty well as Fiji. Fiji in this Rugby 20 game are actually pretty good. It's probably because none of them are licensed and none of them have the correct stats. They've probably made them a little bit better than they uh, probably should be along with that the Rugby 20 game is still relatively easy versus even the uh, the hardest AI. But uh, it's been an interesting sort of development. It's not something I was expecting. I was really looking forward to a nice four games of rugby this weekend, getting back into that international rugby scene. Uh, it's five if you want to include the New Zealand-Argentina game that's going to be going on. I assume that's just going to be an absolute massacre. Um, I did do some reviews of some of the New Zealand club level. When that was going on, I watched the, uh, the Super Rugby Aotearoa, um, and they were brilliant, New Zealand. For anyone that didn't see the New Zealand-Australia game that happened last week, and Australia actually managed to beat New Zealand in that one, which was really surprising, seeing how poorly uh, Australia have been able to cope with New Zealand recently. But I don't know if I see Argentina. I'm going to uh, try and watch that as best I can. It is on at six in the morning here, uh, <laughs> which might be a bit tough. But now that I've lost my France-Fiji game, I might have to stay up and watch my... New Zealand Argentina game to get my rugby fix in. But let me know what you guys think. How do you think this is going to change the tournament? Do you see Fiji coming back and being able to maybe even win their group if they make an amazing comeback from all their COVID situations? Do you think France have been with a better opportunity now of reaching the final? Do people still think Scotland are going to be able to get through, especially now that they'll have a game less to play? Would they even be able to go on to beat an England or an Ireland in that final if they made it. I think it's a really interesting talking point, guys. I'd love to know what you guys think. Make sure you drop it down in the comments. If you enjoy these sorts of video, guys, where I chuck a game of rugby on and we just do some general rugby chats, make sure you drop the video a like. I've been loving the appreciation we've got recently. We just got over 100 subscribers, mainly from doing this rugby content, which I've really liked. I'm a big, passionate rugby fan. I don't claim to be any brilliant professor or analysis of how the games work and some of the other teams. I just do this for a bit of fun. But it's nice to know that people seem to be appreciating and are watching the videos. So if you are enjoying, make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with all of our latest videos as they're coming out. Not just rugby content, we also do some games and stuff on the channel. But make sure you subscribe just to keep up to date. I will see you all next time, guys. Bye-bye.